So now we went through gemstone cut quality quickly. Now we're going to talk about gemstone optics, which is somewhat complex subject, but it's a very interesting subject to me at least. One of my clients once accused me of being a gem nerd and I liked that description so I adopted it. Um, I don't have any official title so I'm a gem nerd. Um, this many people, probably almost everybody has noted that if you have a spoon or any other piece of any object in a cup of water, it often looks like it's broken or bent. Now, why is that? That is because light travels at different speeds through different objects. It travels at one speed through air and at a different speed through water. So what happens when light is traveling meets a different object and changes speed unless it's traveling perfectly directly at the different object. If it hits it at even the slightest angle and changes speed, the light ray will bend. And that's what's happening here. Your line of sight is bending. So the spoon really is over here where it looks like in air. But because your line of sight is being bent by the curvature of the glass, you are seeing the spoon as if it were somewhere else. Um, and in gemstones, that has an impact also. These are renderings of cut gemstones um, done in GemCAD, which is used for doing gemstone fasting design. And this is the light ray that comes straight in through the table. As you can see, it doesn't bend when it first enters the gem. It's reflected here, goes across there, and goes back out there. The same light ray in a gem with a medium refractive index. And to me, it's very interesting that it follows the exact same path inside the gem when it comes in straight in a medium refractive index. And this is a low refractive index. So these are all the same angles, but the low refractive index means the light is bent less. And everybody who's studied gemology has no doubt studied refractive index. And that is how much the light is bent. That's what you're measuring with your refractometer. And it has to do with how I cut gemstones also. So the angles that will work on a high refractive index or a medium refractive index on a low refractive index gemstone. Um, for reference, this is somewhere around a 42 or 43 degrees, as I recall. This high refractive index is about equivalent to a sapphire. The medium refractive index is about equivalent to a topaz. The low refract refractive index is about equivalent to a fluorite. So that's what happens when your angles are not deep enough to reflect for the low refractive index. Now, when things go through a facet, when the light goes through a facet that is angled, things change. The, the light is refracted or bent. So it goes here, bounces off here, bounces up there and out. And in a medium refractive index, it is not refracted or bent quite as much. And so the, the, because it wasn't bent quite as much here, it changed the angle of incidence here. And it did not have enough reflectivity and enough angle to bounce back out here. So it's lost out the side. And this is bent even less, you see this goes even lower and is also bounced out the side. And this is something that we study while designing gemstone cuts, is how to get the most beautiful cut. And one of the factors in getting the most beautiful cut is how much light is coming back to the viewer. The more light that's going out the bottom, the worse in most cases. So here's, here's some more models. 
three examples, the same refractive, same refractive index in this case, but different angles. So this is a gem that's cut too shallowly. This is what happens when you get windowing, the light or line of sight is going out the bottom. This is cut too deep. It goes through and bounces across, but leaks out the side. And this is cut just like Goldilocks and the three bears, just right. Um, so that goes in, across, and back out. Now there are some limitations. If you're really, uh, really a gem nerd and into cutting, you will know that there is something called head shadow. So you, there is a certain amount of danger. The viewer is usually right up here near the O and the P of optics. And if you want to be a little bit careful about this angle or you will be refre reflecting the head of the viewer or the camera and when you're photographing the gem inside the gemstone and that usually shows up as a black pattern. So that needs planning for also. This is more of a basic illustration, but just to show that there are a lot, a lot of things that goes into planning in gem cuts. So what difference does these, do these optics make in the real world? These are two gemstones that are both pink tourmalines. They're the same material. They have the same optics, optical properties and they're the same shape, but this one down low was cut with different angles, different fasting design also, but different angles and a higher polish. Whereas this upper one was cut at too low an angle. So you see the window there, and that makes a very considerable difference in beauty, as you can see. And that's one reason why I, I'm very interested to learn all I can about gem optics. And it's interesting that even after 25 years, I'm still learning about gem optics and gem cutting. There's still more depths to plumb. And that, that I find exciting. You know, it's not that I'm doing wildly different styles sometimes, but I, every year, whoops, every year I get, I get better at what I do and that's fun. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so this is a windowed or fisheye gem. This is an illustration. When you can see through the gem and read through it, that's a window. Sometimes called a fisheye because a, a dead fish will sort of have a shiny part around the eye and a dead spot in the middle. Um, not a very attractive term. Windows or fisheyes are not something you want. And so here are windowed gems, blue topaz, amethyst, tourmaline, and pink tourmaline. And these are the exact same materials, blue topaz, amethyst, green tourmaline, pink tourmaline, in well-cut gems. And so you see the difference that proper optics and good polish can make. Another thing that is interesting is that also because of the rules of optics, a properly cut gem when viewed from straight on, simplifying matters, the light will take roughly this path. It'll take a sort of a U-shaped path and be bounced back to the viewer. However, the exact same gem or the exact same angles on the gem when tilted Tilting the gem reduces, effectively reduces the angle of one side and increases the angle of the other in relationship to the viewer. I'm on. So that causes that causes what we call tilt windowing. And tilt tilt windowing is something that cannot be completely avoided in cut gemstones. And some people confuse tilt windowing with regular windowing. Here is a windowed stone that I showed before. This is what I call a winky stone. This is 
the winky is not a term taught by GIA or anything like that. It's just something that my father and I came up with. You can adopt it if you want or not, but it's what we call a gem that is cut just on the edge of the correct angles. So it'll flash light at you, but as soon as you tilt it even the slightest bit, you can see where the line is. It's not quite in the center of the table. That shows you that this gem is tilted very slightly and it's windowing out this side. This shows you also what tilt windowing looks like. If this gem had the proper angles, it could be tilted significantly further before it winked or lost brilliance on the side. But even a well-cut gem, if tilted far enough, will show some tilt windowing, especially in a flat faceted gem. We'll talk more about that later. Um, this is same shape of gem with the proper gem cut, um, at least in my opinion. And it is tilted. You can see that here's the culet of the gem. It's not in the center. It's tilted this way and it's still brilliant. It's tilted probably about 15 degrees, 10 or 15 degrees here. Um, if you tilt it far enough, then you will start to see localized windowing. And there are a lot of techniques as a gem cutter that we use to try to reduce tilt windowing. Um, one of the ones that I like is using a small table because light going through the crown facets is refracted and bent and therefore you have to tilt the gem further to make it tilt window through these side facets and not through the table. Also, Another trick that many people use is using many rows of facets, many rows of facets at progressively deeper angles. However, the problem with many rows of facets is the more rows of facets, the deeper your gem gets. And that makes it, when it taken to an extreme, that can make your gem hard to set, have to sit up a mile in jewelry. Um, Another thing is that because the each row is progressively deeper, the bottom rows are at the optimal angle, but the rows further up are not at optimal angle. They don't tilt window as easily, but they are often less brilliant. So often you trade a little bit of brilliance for less tilt windowing. And what is aesthetically the best is part of the fun at least what to me is fun, 